Well done. My preparations are complete and I stand ready to seal Zodiac once more. Withdraw now from this place. The teleporter will deliver you to safety. strength fades and blood cools old familiar sensations so many lives so many deaths no different this I close my eyes and slip into the dreamless slumber Tired song and dance, routine. Always I wake. But not this time. <laughs> Nothing left unsaid. Nothing left undone. Inherit my hell. I intone with glee. The man I was would weep for what I have become. The all-consuming contempt. But I've the wisdom of ten millennia to justify my answer to the question. No value in their existence. Not a wit, for all that I looked, none that I did see. A final chance, then, for Heidelin and her faithful. In cataclysm, prove me wrong. I sneer. All shall return to nothingness, as was your will, Emperor Sunday. I, the star, an 
every living being consigned to your oblivion. Was that Van Daniel's true form? That one that was in there? One that we saw? That. Deep breaths, slow and steady. The Highlands boys? You saw it too, yes? The blue star below, thrown into turmoil. Then it was no illusion, all was truth. With the death of Zodiac, the laws of nature over which he presided had begun to unravel. The final days are upon us. What you witnessed was an omen granted by the Echo, a vision of the horrors to come. Time grows short. I was about to say, where the fuck did Xenos go? Slavering beasts gather at your gates, ravenous and eager. Already you turn to them and away from me. I must go forth once more in search of power far beyond the might of Shinryu. Power to make your heart run over with rage. For the eldest of primals was a betrayal of promise. A pathetic creature incapable of inspiring true despair. I... That's what I crave. Pure, unadulterated despair. I'll pull one today.
his zodiac wasn't the final boss. I sense his presence on the moon no longer. If you need not follow, then I beg you stay and listen to what I have to tell you. Of Zodiac, the end of all things. Before we speak at length, I believe a change of surrounds is in order. I have more than ill tidings to share, you see. I sensed others arriving not long ago. Though my communions with Heidelin have grown infrequent, I have learned enough from her to know these are your comrades. And as luck would have it, they have already reached my abode. Come, let's join them. Hey. Right. Well, that's not where I want to How'd you guys get here? Hello. <coughs> Thank goodness you're unharmed. We did what we could to subdue the tempered before making our way here. Not without casualties, unfortunately. Some few detonated explosives, killing themselves and others. The contingent's healers had their hands full, tending to the injured and enthralled when we took our leave. As you wonder, Mistress Cryle has also been delivered unto their care. Serving as a conduit for Hydaelyn's power hath taken its toll, but she will recover in due course. For Alpha No and Alize, they insisted on remaining in Garlemald while we three rushed to your aid. It appears, however, that matters here have already come to a conclusion. But what manner of conclusion, if I might ask? Is this the ally whom Hydaelyn bade you seek out? He is not unlike the Shades of Amaro. Not unlike, perhaps, but not the same. I was created by Hydaelyn, together with this place. It has ever been my duty to keep vigil over Zodiac, or rather, it was my duty. Yeah, he's kind of dead now. Zodiac is no more? And not without consequence, I'm afraid. For now, the delicate weave of the star, preserved by his radiance, will begin to unravel. If you mean to avert the final days, you shall have need of... What? You alright? My attempts to forestall Zodiac's release have all but exhausted my strength. If you might allow me to rest a short while, I will share with you all I can. Please do. You need not exert yourself on our account. These crystals contain records of your time here, yes? May we peruse them while we wait? By all means. If you would review them chronologically, might I suggest beginning with those on the upper floor? I leave that to you, Cyrus. Well, let's see what we can be what can be gleaned from the crystals on these lower levels. Are doing inspect dimly glowing. As you gaze into the crystal, ancient knowledge of zodiac flows through your mind. Memory, no M. Detected. Summary, no app. Appear to be records of a long, lonely vigil on the moon. Back to the beginning of Zodiac's imprisonment. Do the records describe how, with each rejoining, Zodiac's thirst for freedom grew? 
the strain on the brands. Getting Zodiac's imprisonment appears to tax Heidelin greatly. Records describe the Watcher's efforts to prepare in the event Zodiac broke free from his prison. The records go on to describe maintenance carried out regularly with the Leporets, though it is not clear who or what they are. As you gaze into the crystal, a record of an unexpected visitor flows through your mind. The records note the Watcher's musings when Elidibus is spotted on the moon, though clearly not for the first time. It is clear he and his brethren have a keen interest in freeing Zodiac from his prison, yet they have made no attempt to destroy the brands. Perhaps they prefer he remain hidden from mortal eyes until the final rejoining. Perhaps they realize he, we would never dare bring harm to Zodiac so long as he remains in prison. Anything of import? A little bit of this, a little bit of that. It is as we suspected. Maintaining the brands requires a great deal of her energy and focus, and this cost has grown higher with every rejoining. That would explain why contact with her has become rather infrequent since the time of Unbroken Calamity. I too made a rather dis startling discovery. This heavenly body we know to be the moon was in fact created by Heidelin. The Watcher said he was created together with this place. I thought he only meant this facility. Truly, Heidelin's powers are far beyond anything I could have imagined. I thank you for affording me this short reprieve. It is we who should thank you. The records stored here are nothing short of extraordinary. There is much we could learn of Zodiac and his imprisonment, but perhaps you could offer us more focused guidance. Pray, tell us of the calamity that came before and comes now again. Long ago, before the Great Sundering, there was but a single world, Aetherus. One day, from within the earth, a terrible cry issued forth, affecting a profound change in all manner of life. We were not exempt. Our creation magics ran rampant, giving shape and form to thoughts of hopelessness and despair. At first, the phenomenon was limited to a single region, but quickly, so very quickly, it spread and engulfed the whole of the star. Were the ancients ever able to deduce its source? They were not. However, the convocation struck upon a method to predict where next the corruption would manifest. The etheric energies which flow through all of creation in the form of various currents. The currents which course through the land and seas. Those which flow through the very air. And those of a celestial nature which encompass both our star and this moon. 
I cannot say I am familiar with the concept. Or would I expect you to be? Few scholars of our time knew of their existence. The invaluable knowledge helped us to better understand the nature of the calamity. Like the terrestrial ones of earth and air, the celestial currents form a vast network, but the ethereal distribution is not consistent. The conflagration soon realized that the inciting isn't the current regions where the flow was weakest. Correlation without clear cause, ultimately. Nevertheless, in a closer study, a stagnancy of ether was observed in nearby currents. And so they sought a means to harness the forces of darkness, of activity and growth. Thus was Zodiac conceived. No less a power than a god's could set right the laws of nature and quicken the flow of ether within the star. Precisely. The advent of Zodiac, our end, was averted. Emmett Selk claimed that those who summoned Hydaelyn did so because they saw Zodiac's power as a threat. Is that true? Indeed, there was a faction opposed to Zodiac's creation, but their aim was never to unmake him. They understood they, the continued preservation of the natural order was dependent on his very existence. If we could identify and address the underlying cause of the final days, he would need to remain, or his departure would set in motion those apocalyptic forces once more. Eidolon recognized this as well, and so rather than destroy, she sundered Zodiac herself and the star into lesser reflection, as she might confine him in this place. And what she told me in the ethereal sea was false? That the two once dwelled as one until Zodiac grew hungry for power. Upsetting, upsetting the balance twixt them. Not quite a lie, though a rather gross embellishment. But knowing what you know now, you must surely realize what she might opt to obfuscate and mislead. Adeline and Zodiac are both constructs of man, approximations of perfection limited by our own imperfection. Zodiac was, without question, the more powerful of the two, having been born from the sacrifice of half Aetherus' population. Thus, was it necessary for Hydaelyn to commit herself wholly to his defeat, still more effort was needed to confine him. Maintaining the brands taxed her greatly. With what power she dared spare, she cried out to any who might listen, and offered her blessing to those who heeded her call. Though it was likely within her power to do so, I believe she did not wish to speak of a theorist and her history. Like Zodiac, Hylian's, Hylian's purpose is a reflection of her creators. They wish to look to the future and not linger in the prison of the past. Set in motion seven rejoinings before we came to oppose them. How many more worlds would have been lost had we not placed our faith in her? How many more souls living in the present would have been snuffed out for the sake of those long dead? Well, in light of recent events, I see no reason to doubt your word. And even if Hydaelyn is not a god in truth, if Minfilia believed that we should trust in her plans, then I choose to do just that. Which brings me to a rather important question. Let's suppose we try but fail to stop this second coming of the final days. Should the source fall, what will become of the other worlds? The nomenclature is more fitting than you know. Bring ruin to the source, and its reflections will share in its fate. Ah, 
It is ready. This way, if you would be so kind. A beautiful sight, is it not? Yes, but what is it? Adeline knew better than any that her power was not absolute. Indeed, she is, has ever struggled to hold Odiark and his faithful at bay. He feared the worst and so made preparations. In the event of his demise, there would be a contingency. The moon is more than a prison. Is a vessel capable of bearing the people of Aetheris to safe harbor. You need not go far to find its pilots. In fact, I should be happy to take you to them and fulfill my duty as a watcher in the dark. Open cafe. Oh my. When did I get this? I get that. Time has come for you to be on your way. The crater at the heart of Mare Lamentorum, where Zodiac was imprisoned, not so easily traversed, however. Let us call upon Argos, the familiar whom you met earlier. You would have no trouble bearing you across. As Hedlin created me as the jailer, so too did she create Argos as the guard. It is his nature to appear when needed, and yet he is nowhere to be found. Strange. Mayhap the imbalancing of ether has affected him. Let us make for the crushing brand and attempt to call upon him there. You need but recall the path you walked with Argos before, and you will find your way. If he labors in service of Hy to Highland's plan, I see no reason not to do as he suggests. To make for the crushing Brandon. Oh, the watcher. The place we seek is just ahead at the Chlorophos Grot. You see, Harkos cannot manifest without sufficient concentrations of ambient ether. It would be hard pressed to find a greater confluence than inside this cavern. Follow me. Oh, I've been here. Yes, he will do nicely. Lunar Spongai, Spon, Spongoi draw ether from the ground, which is then dispersed in the air. At present, however, the ambient energies are not quite sufficient for Argos to manage. Would you be willing to spare some of your own to help the Spongoi along? Spongoi. Or the Spongeoy. Doggy. There goes Manifest in a flash. He seems to, he seems glad to see you again. The most fascinating creation of Hydalands, would you not agree? Should the need arise, he is even able to create reflections of himself on a whim. But I assure you, it was no reflection which accompanied you earlier to the brand. No, Argos was quite eager to be at your side then, as he is now, it seems. I cannot recall when last he showed such an affinity for anyone. Indeed, I thought him more likely to shy away from you and your companions. Perhaps it was more than a sense of duty that compelled him to aid you before. As for your companions, okay. 
unexpected, but greatly appreciated. I believe we are ready. Unless we turn outside that you may cross the chasm. Your destination is the structure there across the Cradle of Darkness. But we'll cl we'll climb onto Argo's back and he will take care of the rest. Once you arrive, it should not take long to find the ship's crew. The facility is de designed to rouse them from their slumber in the event of Zodiac's destruction. Be their counsel, together you may guide the star and its people to a kinder. This is where we part ways, but know that I shall ever be watching and praying for your success. Our allies' assurance is notwithstanding, we cannot be certain what awaits us on the other side. But perhaps it will be best if we do not all go at once. Repose the two of us cross first, while Thinker and Uriyanje will wait here. A malefic ether that yet permeates from the crater, remnants of Zodiac most like. Hey look, another hole. A little further. Oh look. The structure is enormous, though that is hardly surprising given the size of the average Amarotan. Apologies for the wait. Right, then let us head inside. Oh. Most intriguing. It means by which he conserveth energy, mayhap. I certainly wouldn't want him to blink out of existence on our account, helpful as he's been. Thank you, Argos. We'll take things from here. If Argos is to remain without, let us not keep him waiting over long. True. So that means there's pe that means people here. This is fucking huge. Moonship pilot should be around here somewhere. Is that right? Oh my god, they are adorable. Of course there's gonna be bunnies on the moon. Why wouldn't there be? <laughs> Look at all of them! Now I'm sleeping. I mean, it was sleeping for however long it's been here. Is that the leader? Look lively, everyone. I know, I know. This 
43rd inspection is a mite ahead of schedule, but it is of the utmost importance. For Zodiac, alas, is no more. As of now, our mighty moon has a new purpose. To bear the people of Aetherius to safety. Our time is come, my friends. <laughs> Before our guests arrive, I expect your workstation to be immaculate, and don't forget to relay our signal to Etheris. Questions? Yes? No? Maybe so? No? Then what's <laughs> it? Oh, I can't. So cute. <laughs> Everybody's all like, what? Is a rather curious crew she have chosen. Their endearing forms intended to ease the passengers' hearts, perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. Okay. Oh god, like they're running all over the place. They must be the Loper to mention the Watcher's records. Not at all what I expected, but the Watcher did bid us heed their counsel. I assume the one who gave that rousing speech was their leader, though we might have to ask in order to track them down. Come on then, let us be about it. I'm running. Ow. I gotta get the thing with you trading way. The gem cell trade right here. Chipper Lopper it. Hum, hum, hum. Leader of our crew? Not me, I'm afraid. Think, think, thinking Way is the name. I'm in charge of the construction and maintenance of the atmospheric circulation system. Only the crispest, cleanest air for the people of Etheris. That's a promise. I see a thing, but Jiggy, I gotta grind on this. <laughs> Dancing way. Uh, their names all if like and in way like they name like the dwarves. Dwarves. They just but they just have their names in a way. Lim lim lim. Either no, sleeping way. My job is is hmm, perhaps I'd better ask. Wow. Recording way. Huh? Come over that. Where are you? Happy Loper. Hello? What? What? How in the. When did you get here? Who let you in? It wasn't I told. Take me to your leader. Uh, hum, hum, hum. <laughs> oh, 
What was that supposed to be? Your humming? It won't even call it that. <laughs> it's atrociously off key. You just have one like this. <laughs> I tried, all right. As leader of the Lipperitz, I cannot allow so pathetic attempts at mass at musicality to go unremarked, even if you are a guest. But being the magnanimous sort that I am, I'll forgive you this once. Oh well, looks like you beat us here. Your friends, I take it? Is this all of them? The group comprised entirely of children. What must their parents be thinking? I guess we are kids compared to you. This isn't a nursery after all, though perhaps we should build one. Or do we build one already? No matter, you needn't worry your petty little heads. All will be well, I promise. But goodness me, we shouldn't be standing out about gopping. I must take you to meet the others. If you could run along back toward the entrance, you'll find a path that leads to the central platform on the upper floor. There's no wrong way to reach it, but it's the large glowing ball at the center. If you should find yourself lost. I shall gather the others and meet you there. Well then, back to the upper floor it is. Hello. Right, of course. Introductions are in order. Ahem. My name is Livingway, and we are the Lopperitz. Created for the express purpose of commanding this ship and bearing the people of Atheris to a brave new world. More specifically, I am the one whom she charged with the execution of her most vital plans. You might say I'm her right paw. Nothing weighs the name. Map reader and navigator of the heavens. Pleasure to meet you all. But I'm still trying to make sense of this. <laughs> Confusion and bewilderment are completely understandable. Fear not. I shall walk you through it. Ah, oh, damn it! I was clicking, but where was it going? Of the imminent crisis, your parents sent you, little ones, on ahead while they began the necessary preparations. I sure. Where are my parents, anyways? Still not following? No. Very well. I shall elaborate further. Oh, baby. around to keep things lively so to speak the celestial currents of the star have doubtless begun to degrade a calamity of apocalyptic proportions will be visited upon a ferris bringing an end to all life so sad that so too hath the watcher claimed by thine unperturbed countenance i gather this eventuality was anticipated Doom and gloom. Oh, yes, quite expected. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, that a Therese is a delicious carrot that I've forgotten to eat and left out in the midday sun. The most earnest wishes or prayers will not stop it from rotting to the core. Though, sadly, there's nothing to be done but to abandon said carrot, a Therese, in case the metaphor is lost on you, to its grisly fate. And this moon will serve as the vessel to deliver us to a new home. Just so! We will gather up as many people, supplies, and resources as our stores will hold. And then, once everyone is aboard, it's off to another star! Is that... Oh, but all the people of the other... Reflections won't have this. Well, they'll just die. Easier said than done, admittedly. 
for one does not simply hop from star to star on a whim. Which is precisely why we've spent countless years constructing the most propulsive of propulsion systems. We ought to make it to our destination in two shakes of a rabbit's tail. Number. Great. Impressive technology. I dare say it is beyond anything we have ever seen. No need to shower us with praise. All we've done is faithfully carry out the instructions left to us by Hydaelyn. Back in the old days, when she was still just Venar, she was dedicated to the study of the world and its inner workings. Venar. And the Watcher, the real one, not the simulacrum you met, was one of her fellow researchers. We and this wondrous vessel masquerading as a moon are products of their knowledge and know-how. There's certainly more to you all than meets the eye. Might I ask where exactly you intend to take us? We identified a few promising candidates for resettlement some time ago, but we cannot guarantee that they are fit for habitation. Moreover, the ship can only travel in short bursts. We intend to go down our list, hopping from star to star, until we find one suitable for resettlement. No need to worry, though. The vessel is being refurbished with accommodation for an extended stay as we speak. While we did have to rely upon outside help to determine what amenities were essential, I dare say we have risen to the challenge. Help? From who? <laughs> From you and yours! Who else? Each time we work to perform regularly scheduled maintenance, we were greeted by the resources you sent us. What better way to learn about preferences and proclivities of our present-day charges? Ah, oh, but you're still adorable little children. Perhaps your elders were responsible for the deliveries. I'm not sure what led you to conclude otherwise, but I can assure you that we are all grown men and women, and I very much doubt my elders know this place exists. Much less how to send you so much as a starlight missive. What? Then who in blazes let you on my moon? Well, Hydaelyn. Hydaelyn herself led you here. You don't say? Well, that's really not children. Then why are you so small and stunted? Like little baby carrot people. Because we're not Amaro. I guess we're children because we look like those things were Amarotine. Amarotine. Yeah. We think we're ancients. Well, Amarotines were a great deal taller. In the present day, persons of such prodigious size are exceedingly rare. So, you're saying everyone's not like the Watcher? Not anymore. That tome in thy possession. Oh, this? One of the first books sent to us. A compendium of the people of Atheris. With a few blank pages at the back for minor corrections and updates as needed. The sum total of our knowledge of your kind is contained in these pages. How long ago was the last update to that? I thought it was abridged and made small for our benefit, but... This isn't a regular sized book, is it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh no. I run fast. Perhaps <laughs> you could tell us a bit more about your terrestrial collaborators. Yes, yes, in due time. But first, I'd like to hear more about you, if it's all the same. I'd rather... 
rather not risk any other complications due to outdated knowledge of our passengers to be. So what was the last time they were updated on us was when they were still ancients? Right then, now that you're here, we need to we need you to teach us all you can about your people. And quickly, it won't be long before the final days are upon us in all their terrible grandeur. So it is imperative that we be prepared to receive our passengers to be. If there's anything, anything at all, that may displease them, it must be addressed post haste. And address it we shall. Here at Bestways Borough, we have assembled everything required to offer our guests the best way forward. And we have produced myriad amenities we understand to be essential for day-to-day -day living. I wish to hear your opinions on them. Here you've all worked up an appetite. Why don't we start with foodstuffs? We have the Caratorium. We'll see about filling your bellies. Not well, one for enthusiasm. The notion of a theorist rotting to its core being a matter of course is rather concerning, though. Nevertheless, let us take this opportunity to learn more of the Loperitz and this vessel. Welcome to the Caratorium. Here we create prototypes of the various sundries required by our soon-to-be passengers. Let me do it. introduce the head of Hootsa's production. Cooking Way. Pleasure to meet you all. Our work has involved no small amount of trial and error. After many, many cycles of painstaking labor, I dare say we have created the finest cuisine our guests could, go could ask for. We're all about the essential nutrients for a healthy and balanced diet. The reference materials we received. Uh, I practically warned the words from these in... in I practically warned the words for, from these invaluable pages. Actually, we've also considered ease of growth and production. We're not one for ingredients. I must insist you try some. We have fresh stock recently prepared on account of, well, because we just woke up. <laughs> We're all quite famished. Up along the platforms here and you'll find a storage unit full of to bursting with electrical lights. Help yourself to anything. Can I, can I get on there? All right. Let's go through there. All right. These are actual carrots. I thought it was just a, like a play on words cause, cause they're bunnies. Open the storage unit and find a rainbow color to serve the carrots. The ominous crimson carrot. Soft texture and redolent aroma of this crimson carrot belly its staggering weight. The excessive length and girth only compound the mystery, leaving you perplexed as to the nature of this carrot. A second thought, you'd like to simply take an obscenely large carrot for now. Due to its bizarre qualities, it would be prudent to ask cooking when whether it's safe to eat first. Did any of our selections set your mouth to watering? This obscenely large carrot. Ah yes, fine choice. One of my personal favorites, actually. Please dig in. I'm eager to hear what you think. Okay. With great trepidation, you take a bite out of the carrot. The carrot is oddly tender, but as you begin to do, a rich aroma fills your nostrils. The newfound vigor begins to welling within you. The rumbling of your stomach, however, suggests it may simply be indigestion. Iron the carrot, you suddenly find yourself full of vim and vigor. What do you think? Unlike anything you've ever tasted, yes? The iron the carrot can be a bit difficult to digest, but the boost to endurance it promises makes it the perfect meal before a day of heavy lifting. 
We have plenty of other varieties too. Bleeding carrots to improve blood flow, dream carrots to help us sleep. You see, we have a carrot for every occasion. Can certainly see a demand for this in Charlian. Charlian? What one of places is that? I take it you two had a wide assortment of carrots to choose from and not else? Let me ask, what exactly did these collaborators share with you about cuisine of on Aetheris? Surely you are aware we have an abundance of dishes and foods you could emulate. Of course we are, but well, it was only quite recently that we established contact. Even holding a conversation was a struggle at first, so imagine our surprise when they sent a mountain of books and documents with no clear instructions. The sheer amount of information was overwhelming. If it wasn't for that encyclopedia we found, it would have been a loss of where to begin. So we decided, rather than divide our resources to prepare a variety of middling and potentially unsatisfying meals, it would be more efficient to devote our efforts to the production of a single perfect food. It's all well and good, but man cannot live on raw carrots alone. Instead of cooking them? I mean, steaming, boiling, roasting, and the like? I suppose we could prepare the carrots in other ways. But our primary concern was efficiency. What's more efficient than sinking your teeth into a carrot fresh from production? Rather strange approach to take for one named Cooking Way, isn't it? Well, technically speaking, Cooking Way isn't my given name. When first created, we are all named in the old tongue, you know? That otherwise impenetrable parlance the watcher speaks. After we received a great tome of words, a dictionary that is from our collaborators, we learned your language, adverbs, gerunds, present, continent, verb, conjunctions, just the basics. We found the terms related to our given tasks and used them to form new names. Aren't they helpful? No, not really, but it does explain a great deal. Wherefore did I deem such a change necessary? When the rest of your people arrive, we want to be certain they can understand immediately what each one of us does. You'll be able to pronounce our original names anyway. I see. I hope our critiques such as they are were helpful to you. So if you should decide to preserve flora and fauna from Ethereus as well, you'll be able to offer the passengers a more balanced diet. So such a day, or one I pray comes sooner than later, it would appear there is not but carrots on the menu. There you go. Purple carrot juice. I think we've had our fill of carrots. Of carrots for now. Let's move on to other necessities, shall we? Our clothing production is sure to impress. This way, uh, you just. Just found out they're all not as tall as MRO teams, right? So why are these hackable? Well, they all have deep bunny ears too. Caretaker. Hey, why are you hunting me? You're hurting me. Wait, there's music. What the fuck? What? What is it? I I mean I know why, but like, oh my god, talk about a fucking reference. We are the apparel production station. We've chosen to employ more traditional methods for this task: creation magics. Adeline, in her infinite wisdom, blessed us with the self-same affinity for magic where people possessed. You have other amazing talents, of course, and I know you're dying to hear about them, but I will regale you with the details another time. That said, we did run into a spot of trouble at first. The magic alone was not sufficient to see our work done. In the end, we discovered a crystallized ether was a wonderful catalyst that could provide us with the extra Vs we need. My, how resourceful. Ah, oh, the sweet sound of recognition. You will also be impressed to hear we've read all about your habits of changing attire to match your chosen profession. For the sake of efficiency, I presume? This has also been taken into account with our designs. Why take my word for it when you can simply try on our clothes? Make yourselves known to the workers and they will see you to the rest. Ah! 
Ow. Ah, it's you, one of the visitors from Etheris. Goodness me, mapping away wasn't kidding. You really are smarter, smarter than the Watcher. All right, you were here to try on a set of clothes, yes? What would you have me fashion for you today? Something simple yet functional. Simple and functional, right? Um, this will only take a moment. Oh, it looks cozy. We are all finished. Perfect fit, if I do say so myself. Nothing too billowy or frilly, as you can see. All light and durable. Uh, sure to serve you well, whether wherever your travels may, might take you. Would you look at that? Speechless. And there, I thought you may not like it. If you mind to try something else? Why not speak with my fellow artisans? Sure, they'd be happy to oblige. Let's continue wearing these garments in order to progress. We change back to your normal garments if you move too far away. Look to your map for the garment changes to your effect. Speak with the restless loper to restore your pro to or prolong your get garment. Ah, ah yes. Oh shit, what did I just drop? Uh, no one said you were coming, or how can I help you? You wish to try my clothes, really? Of course, it'll be my honor. You have everything in mind? I didn't think it was a little more. Lair? I think I can handle that. Let's see. This should do. I guess. It's it sounds fucking damn. Doing my best work yet. Times and tastes truly have changed. It used to be so rare for anyone to request clothing with a focus on form over function. Thankfully, I had a spare concept for robes made using a different fabric. I think it looks rather fetching. <laughs> it's all the same because of the all the fucking emerging war too. I was worried how the concept would turn out when put to the proof, but it looks stunning on you. Would you go and show a living way? I'm sure she's eager to see what we've come up with. Okay. Why don't we look splendid? The results of much trial and error, but I know quality work when I see it. You need to speak. I can see your adoration for the moon and we love birds in your eyes. No doubt your friends feel the same having sampled our creations. I guess y'all look the same too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to have kept you waiting. <laughs> it's just we sample all of their concepts ere we returned. Barely, tis an ensemble most becoming. <laughs> I think it's past time we return these clothes. <laughs> Connection was lost. 